silence. Sometimes it's golden. Sometimes it's broken. Sometimes it's deafening. Sometimes it's peace-filled. And sometimes it's just plain awkward. When was the last time you spent any time in silence? No talking, no music, no television, phone, computer, nothing. Well, if you're like the average American, it's been a while. A very long while. Which really isn't a very good thing because science has proven the, that silence improves brain function, it reduces stress, and is something that our bodies and minds actually need to function properly. Unfortunately, though, most of us don't know what true silence really is. Civilization's soundtrack means we're continually surrounded by noise. Traffic and sirens and chatter and machines and appliances all work together to make an unstoppable hum of living an urban and tech-driven existence. Even if we stop now, it's not complete silence. Add in the hustle and bustle of the holidays and grandma got run over by a reindeer, <laughs> blasting out of nearly every single store and it becomes the perfect recipe for a giant case of noise pollution. So I guess it's no wonder that over the last several days, I have found that silence is something that I crave. Craving those moments just to completely stop with the noise of life. Stop with work and shopping and wrapping and baking and listening to just stop it all. To sit silently at the manger contemplating the coming of the Christ child and what his coming will birth in my life for the next year. So on Thursday, as I sat in as close to silence as you can get in your house with dogs and animals and an old heater, I sat there to contemplate Joseph's story, and I found myself captivated by Joseph's silent presence in the nativity story. I mean, if you look closely in all of the scriptures, Joseph never utters a word. He never speaks and perhaps I think that's why he might be so often overlooked. And yet, the more I let that silence lead me, the more in awe I was of Joseph's strength and obedience to become a partner with God to change the world. You might remember a couple of weeks ago, I told you that as I was working on my sermon about Mary, I found it very, very difficult to find the right words to describe Mary's life of obedience. And I found the same thing to be true about Joseph. I mean, how do you authentically reflect a man whose faith led him into an unknown and frightening future, and then he took and made every step he had in faith and love for his God and his fiance? So then it was then that I got this crazy idea. I wanted to write Joseph a letter. Sure, I had tons of questions I wanted to ask him, but more than that, I wanted to thank him for being an incredible human being who was a disciple of rich and pure faith. And I wanted to thank him for being a person of silent strength. A letter that might go something like this. Dear Joseph, Okay, I know it might be a bit awkward receiving a letter 2,000 years after you walked this earth, but I really felt called to write you. I don't know if you'll ever know the impact you had on this world, but I wanted to let you know you were never forgotten. 
Still, if there was ever a guy in the scriptures whose contributions and faithfulness have been overlooked, the guy is you, Joseph. You've been swept under the rug. I mean, when I ask people about your gift to the birth of Jesus, they often respond with, I don't know. I just see him as the guy on the Christmas card leading the donkey. Or, you know, the tall kid who can't act, standing at the back of the nativity silently in his father's bathrobe. Oh, Joseph, you are a silent mystery to so many. But in the darkness of these last few nights, dear Joseph, I've come to learn that maybe your silence is what made you important. It's difficult to imagine what you must have gone through in the silence of the night, in the time before Jesus' birth, the questions you had to have, and how your heart must have ached with worry. Your brain had to have spun nonstop, wondering what the future was going to hold. I know I've experienced some rough and some really amazing stuff in my life, Joseph, but let's face it, you take it to a whole new level. One day you're an ordinary carpenter going about your work and you're getting ready to get married and the next you're in a situation beyond any human understanding. I mean, you were told by an angel that you're going to be the stepfather to the son of God. Talk about having your world flipped upside down. I can't even conceive what it must have been like when Mary showed up at your house telling you that she was pregnant. And not just pregnant but carrying the Son of God as conceived by the Holy Spirit. Be honest. Did you believe her? Did you believe the story of the angel's visit? Or was, did you think it was just some kind of cruel joke? Did you feel betrayed, wondering if she had been unfaithful to your love? It must have felt like all of Israel's eyes were on you. I mean, Joseph, you were the person people looked up to. They called you righteous because of your faithfulness to the Torah. And here you are, this man of great character and faith, and suddenly all you believed in and worked for is being challenged. And worse yet, your hand was being forced to make a virtually impossible decision, a heart-wrenching decision. Death. That was the decision you were supposed to make for Mary. You were supposed to publicly sentence her to death for her unfaithfulness to you. That had to have cut deep into your heart. Yet rather than lashing out with words and ridiculing her, beating and condemning her in front of the community, you remain silent. You remain silent, refusing to give in to the harsh words of the elders until your faith led you to find the right answer. You know, Joseph, when I really stop and think about it, you gave Christmas its beginning on that noisy, thought-filled, fearful night when the angel visited you in your sleep. I can just see you tossing and turning in your bed, trying to shut out the noise of the outside world so you can figure out how you're going to quietly divorce Mary. Little did you know that when you were going to drift off to sleep, that crazy night was going to turn into a special night, a holy night, where in the silence you suddenly found yourself alone with not your thoughts and fears, but alone with the divine. And then that dream came, a dream like no other you'd ever had before. I'm sure you'd heard of your ancestors having dreams and angels coming to them in dreams, but did you ever think it would happen to you? What was it like in your dream when the angel spoke to you? Did it seem real? Or were you frightened? But then, then those words took over. They took over your thoughts. 
Joseph, son of David, do not fear. Do not fear to take Mary as your wife. Do not fear, for the child within her is conceived by the Holy Spirit. His name will be Emmanuel, which means God with us. Wow. How scary and amazing all at the same time. So when you woke up, Joseph, did you stop to wonder if this dream really happened? Or in the silence of that night, did you find that amazing God-given peace that we all crave? God really was telling you to take Mary to be your wife. She didn't cheat on you, and God wanted you to be part of out of amazing plan and gift to the world. The choice was now yours. It would mean facing ridicule and scorned looks and gossip of your neighbors and your family looking down their noses at you. And yet, Joseph, he chose to take the angel's word to heart and find the silent strength that lie within you to become a partner with God. A silent strength that would lead you to step out the front door that morning and place your entire life and the life of Mary on faith. So I guess with all these words, Joseph, what I really want to say is thank you. As someone who's heard your story for 50 years, I want to say thank you for being a model of silent strength to me. For saying yes to God and putting your ego aside and stepping forward into the future with faith so that I could have eternal life with your son. I also want to thank you for teaching me that I don't always have to be the leader to make a difference. And sometimes playing the supportive role has the most impact. I mean, there's so many times that I wish I could go out and help someone I love, but due to life circumstances, I can't, and I feel so helpless. And yet, Joseph, your story, it's taught me that simply standing alongside, silently, those I love may be the greatest gift of all. You've helped me see that God chooses to pick ordinary people to be part of something extraordinary. And even if I don't get to speak any words, I still get to be a part of changing the world. Dear, dear Joseph, the nativity is coming to life. In 24 hours it will unfold. And how I wish I could walk by your side these next 24 hours just to silently be present for you. To walk by you when fatigue fills your body as you watch Mary grimace with labor at the end of this week-long journey to Bethlehem. To stand by you in solidarity as you bang in anger and frustration on every door just trying to find a place to stay. To silently empower you as you carry Mary into the barn and work to make a bed soft enough for her to give birth on and hear you encourage her with every painful breath she takes. I wish so bad I could be by your side and cry with joy when a baby's cry pierces the silent night air to watch you hold this infant son for the first time as his father and hear him claim you, claim, hear you claim his as your own when you name your son Jesus. How I long to be by your side as you open the door and welcome a dirty, stinking, filthy, ragtag bag of shepherds who have come to worship your son, the world's infant king. But more than anything, Joseph, I wish I could stand by your side tomorrow night simply to pray. To pray that for this one night, 
you're able to let the worries of what life will bring for your son disappear into the starry night sky. To pray that for this one night, as you hold your precious wife close, together you two will dream dreams for your son as you count his tiny fingers and toes. I pray that all fear will be erased and replaced by utter and perfect joy. And that you will have this night not to wonder what the future will hold, but to be in awe of the one you will hold. Your God, my God, Joseph, you will hold him in your arms. Joseph, son of David, do not fear. May God bless you, Joseph, and your silent strength.